Hi, here's another uh, blog update. Uh, this video is called Flat Earth Proof. Show me the measurements. Have you seen this video called Flat Earth Proof 3 Land Ho? I link it here for you. It's only 6 minutes and 39 seconds. Take a look. This is a very uh, popular video. It has many views and a lot of thumbs up. So there we go. Now, the maker of the video credits Eric Dubay uh, using the information from one of his books. And I'm going to show you some of that here. Uh, the video basically cites or includes many locations around the world uh, talking about features whether they are buildings, lighthouses, or mountains, whatever, that can be seen from very far away, and they are supposed to be hidden by curvature. So my question is, did he go to these places, and did he make these measurements, and did he calculate all this? Here's another one. Did he go to Boston? Where did he make these measurements from? Here's one, uh, another one where uh, it's uh, in England, and it's seen from 42 miles away, which is a good thing, I guess, if you want to make sure ships can see your lights. It says it's supposed to be hidden by 996 feet of curvature. So if we can see all these places at these distances, why does he keep repeating that these places are supposed to be hidden by the amount of curvature he has calculated. Here's another one. Seen from 50 miles away, it's supposed to be hidden by 1,400 feet. Really? He measured this? <laughs> That's my reaction. Uh, the Statue of Liberty, it's supposed to be hidden by over 2,000 feet of curvature. Where did he uh, measure this from? Because I would like to go there to that spot myself, wouldn't you? Here's a place, I think it's in, uh, I forget where he said this is. Um, so, you know, again, now it's getting up there. It's supposed to be hidden by 2,000 feet, over 2,000 feet. Really, has anyone seen this from themselves and verified his measurements and calculations? This one's great. Uh, in England, has anyone near the Isle of Wight visited this place to confirm his measurements and his calculations? Look at this. He draws this line here. It's supposed to be bowing by 416 feet. Really? Is that how it works? So I'm asking you this. Is it possible he might be calculating this incorrectly? Now what's this? Philadelphia. <laughs> Say what? This is my backyard. All right. This is what really got my attention about a year or so ago. And uh, here he claims that uh, Philadelphia is supposed to be hidden by 30, 335 feet of missing curvature. So I just go, had to go see this for myself. It's very close to where I live. I went up to Apple Pie Hill. There's a fire tower there. I put my theodolite up there. And here's the uh, view toward Philadelphia from the top of the fire tower. And here I am, and I made the measurements, and I recorded my observations. That's my wind gauge. It got calm all of a sudden. Time to take a reading. I was able to measure zenith angles to a tall building in Philadelphia. However, I was not able to do the reciprocal observations back to the tower since uh, I, I didn't know what building this was. Later on, I learned it was the Comcast Center. And of course, I can't go up there. They're not going to let me up there. I didn't even bother to try that. But what I did do is a full-out geodetic survey. Uh, here's, here's Philadelphia. Here's the tower. 
these are the zenith angles I measured to the tower to a uh, Comcast building. But what I did is I set up baselines on the Camden waterfront at the Delaware River, and I made observations to the Comcast building. So I positioned that building from the Camden waterfront. Here's my observation lines. Took many intersections to do that to these prominent corners on the top of that building. This is what it looks like through my telescope. And uh, there it is. I post my results here. Let me uh, bump that up a little bit. And here it is. So I'm just showing you that from the Apple Pie Hill Fire Tower to the top of the Comcast building, to give you the difference in elevation. This is the Delta Arc computed. And it's about 32 miles away. He says in his video it's 40 miles away. Well, it's not. I measured it. And, uh, and I give you the drop of the curve measured down from the horizontal plane at the standpoint. Okay. So it looks like that. And I also measure, I give you my zenith angle that I measured to the top. And that's the final results. However, uh, later on, I went back up there after I figured out that I could actually take pictures through my telescope. Because the first time I went up there, I didn't know I could do that. And it's not easy to do, but here's one. So this is my level line at elevation 256 feet. And, uh, you know, here's the information. So I'm about 138 feet down from the top of this, uh, you know, 1,000 foot tall building, or 1,010 feet, basically. <clears throat> and this uh, instrument isn't even my theodolite, it's just this simple auto level. You can rent one of these from any uh, uh, builder supply place or, uh, you know, uh, uh, rent, tool rental place. It's very simple. All you have to do is bubble up the, put the bubble inside that circle, and it has an internal compensator that does the rest for you, and it does create a level uh, surface for you to uh, to do work, you know, doing masonry work or you know, dirt work. You want to level out the yard, or you're going to put a pool in your backyard. You want to level out that area. You could use one of these. So anyway, uh, the conclusion here is that there's no missing curvature from Apple Pie Hill to Philadelphia, and I went and measured that. <clears throat> So, continuing again with the Land Ho video, here he shows this uh, the Chicago uh, skyline 
is claiming it should be hidden by 2,400 feet of missing curvature. So uh, did he measure that? Really? <laughs> yeah, a lot of claims here. Where's the measurements? Uh, here's, here's a video made by someone that's called the Red Pill World. And he went to this location and he measured with his theodolite. He has an electronic theodolite. He measures to the top of the Sears Tower, 53 miles away. And I link his video here for you to look at. And, uh, you know, you notice here, he got a lot of, got a lot of thumbs down. So why? <laughs> I don't understand. And uh, not nearly as many views, but um, not, not a popular video. So here, look at this. He measures 90 degrees, zero, zero minutes, zero, seven seconds to the top of that spire or that lightning rod up on top of that uh, building. Uh, and I say here, let that sink in for a minute. Give that some thought. Well, here, this guy, Brian Mullen, he says he's an engineer. He made a video called Balls Out Physics. It's all about perspective. And he does this analysis and evaluation of Red Pill World's measurements. Um, go ahead and take a listen to that. I think I'll be making a video to uh, evaluate that. But... Uh, the one thing is, I listen to it, he's talking about perspective, and he's talking about something called that he calls bunching up, and he makes it very apparent that he knows nothing about uh, surveying instruments. And I link here a very good book for you to take a look at. It's a nice book online. You can download this PDF and uh, get some education there. It's an awesome book. It's an old book, too. All right, back to the Lanho video. It just goes on and on with incredible <laughs> amounts of missing curvature and, uh, you know, more places in the world. So I'm saying here, could it be that maybe just perhaps he is mistaken and has incorrectly applied the curvature formula all wrong? And then using his incorrect calculations leaps to the conclusion that the Earth is flat? Is, you know, could that be? Um, maybe, just maybe, if he went back and he learned more about the surveying math that he is trying to use to compute missing curvature, and he learned how to apply the formula correctly by establishing the horizontal plane to be perpendicular to the vertical plumb line at the observer's location, that maybe he will see the huge mistake he has made and the wrong conclusion he has reached in his Land Ho video. And I'm giving you the links to Dr. Zach's two-part series on the misconception of curvature. Go take a look at those. It does a nice job. It's a very simple explanation. It's right on the money. Continuing here with the, uh, it's nearly done there. Now he's claiming us over nearly, <laughs> over 8,000, almost 8,000 feet of missing curvature to this mountain. So while we wait for him to correct his mistakes and then make a new video called Flat Earth No Proof Based on Real Measurements, I would like to see surveyors around the world make their own measurements and share them with everyone. Get started by visiting the places mentioned in this Land Ho video, make your own measurements, and find out if there is really any missing curvature. So check out this. These buildings are around the world. And if you are near any of these amazingly tall buildings, and I give you a link to that, uh, I'm sure you would be able to collect some very interesting data, whether you can see the building from really far away, like the one in Chicago, or the one I measure to, Philadelphia, which is nowhere near as tall as some of these. You could get some really good data. Or if you have the ability and the permission to get up on top of one of these buildings to see very far away to some other objects, uh, creating that perpendicular horizontal plane, you will be able to take some very interesting pictures and, uh, and share them. And uh, if you want to send them to me, here's the email address you can reach me at and send me that data. I'll, I'll include them in a video. Um, so that's it. I'm going to end this here and uh, hope to hear from you.
Bye bye. Lights basically consist of a series of mutually perpendicular axes. The vertical axis, which passes through the center of the horizontal circle, the trunnion axis, which passes through the center of the vertical circle, and the line of collimation, or line of sight, which passes along the center of the telescope through the center of the crosshairs on the diaphragm. Before it can be used to measure angles, the theodolite must be carefully centered and leveled so that its vertical axis passes vertically through the station, its horizontal circle lies in a horizontal plane, and its vertical circle lies in a vertical plane.